Last week on the Australian Fishing Championships made for one of the toughest rounds ever. Some of the quickest wind-ins and some of the biggest bust-offs we've ever seen. But it was Darren Borg from Team V8X magazine who claimed his first AFC win. This week we travelled to the Sunshine State and the intricate canal systems of the Gold Coast for round three of the Australian Fishing Championships. Steve Starling and welcome to round three of the Australian Fishing Championships from Queensland's playground, the glittering and today rather windy Gold Coast. This is the last opportunity for our brim specialists to score valuable championship points for their teams because next round the Bass Pros take over. Now I'm joined as always by Adam Mad Dog Reuter. Adam, round two at Foster had everything. Wasn't it a cracker of a round, Steve? We saw Darren Dizzy Borg from V8X magazine opt to select for a slightly smaller but easier to land bunch of fish, but they were the ones that he could get in the boat and make his five and came out on top. Couldn't say the same for Team Berkeley Scott Towner. He couldn't get himself out of those racks trying to pull out those big nasty brawlers from all of that hard structure and he ended up with three. But I tell you what, some of those bus stops, I'll remember those for a long time, mate. I think we all will. Some monumental wipeouts there for Scotty Towner. But of course, round two belonged to Darren Dizzy Borg and Team V8X magazine. They finished up out ahead with a very valuable 18 championship points. Reigning AFC Outdoors champ Tim Morgan has secured second spot for Team Humminbird with 16 points. Team Berkeley Scott Towner is in a competitive position, only a few points behind the leaders on 13. And a poor start at the Hawkesbury, coupled with a second at Foster, sees Chris Hickson bringing up the rear on 11 points. Technically, however, even he is still in the running to be our top brim pro. I've managed to wrestle a couple of the anglers out of their boats just before the start. Tim Morgan and Darren Borg. Now, Timmy, you'd have to say that you're a pretty good chance to take this round out, being that it's in your backyard. Well, Adam, it's the ideal venue for me, being two points behind. If I had to choose somewhere to come and fish to try and make up those points, it'd be right here. It's going to be a tough day on the water with this wind, but if I can get one or two over 30, I think I'll be in with a chance. And Darren, how do you feel going into this round on top of the championship board and on top of Tim? Well, Adam, it's not very often I get one up on Timmy, so I'm going to try to make the most of it today. The wind's going to make it tough, and in this arena, Tim is going to be very hard to beat. Well, there you go. A lot of pride and a lot of points to be sorted out here on the Gold Coast. I'm going to let you two go back into your boats and get ready for today's round. Here's Starla with a larger look at this arena. Our last brim round for the Australian Fishing Championships is Queensland's famous Gold Coast. When you're fishing here, it makes more sense to use a street directory than a nautical chart. This is urban fishing AFC style, where our competitors will literally be in the backyards of Gold Coast residences. The Gold Coast provides our anglers with plenty of natural habitat, such as sandbars, mangroves and estuary banks, but it's the man-made structure that our pros will mostly concentrate on. Here, the Brim's Adventure Playground consists of pontoons, moored boats, jetties, docks, slipways, and various rock-retaining walls. These abundant structures provide both food and shelter for the fish, but as boat traffic increases and the light levels intensify, the fish will tuck in tighter and tighter under the cover, making it that much more challenging for our brim pros. Around the meringue here, the, the big fish tend to move around a fair bit, so if you can get onto a pattern of a, of a couple in, a, in the area, it'll really stand you in good stead for the comp, but my aim for the day is just to keep casting at pontoons, keep casting at boats, get as many fish as I can, and hopefully the big fish will come. Yesterday I had a shocking free fish. We only caught small fish. The biggest fish we caught was about 25, 26 centimetres to the fork. We couldn't find any of the big fish that we, were, we found earlier a few weeks ago, so it's going to be very tough. Um, first up this morning, I'll probably head up into canals up the back of the Narang. Um, there's probably three or four spots up there that I'm going to go to, and then as the tide changes and comes out, and hopefully we've got five fish, I'll head to the main river and try and get some big ones. Today's conditions would be good if the wind would stop blowing. Uh, 
It's been blowing all night. Uh, it's forecast to uh, pick up this afternoon sometime. So um, I'm just hoping that the uh, forecasts are wrong. Today I'm going to be using the Tackle Tactics hidden weight system. As you can see, it's a, it's a very lightly weighted jig head, only 1 40th of an ounce. And you actually push that lead weight on the jig head hook all the way into the plastic. So it actually only leaves the eye of the hook, which you can tie your line onto, and the barb of the hook exposed. Some interesting thoughts from our anglers there. This is an incredibly confusing place to fish. There's canals and little side streams everywhere. Heaps and heaps of structure to fish. Let's hope that some of our anglers brought their street directories. Well, let's cross to Matthew Campbell now to get them underway. Thanks very much, Adam. Before our pros get underway today, let's recap the rules. They'll be fishing catch and release for a total of seven hours using flies and lures only. Their five heaviest fish at the end of the day will be weighed. The heaviest bag will score the maximum 10 points. Local knowledge is always important, and today's local is the champ, Tim the Brim Morgan. I'm happy the sun's out because the fish will really congregate under that structure, but this wind is going to make it really hard to fish the way I like fishing on the Gold Coast. I still think I'll have no worries getting the five. I think it's going to be hard to get those few bigger ones now, but everyone's in the same boat, so no excuses. As usual, the champ is confident as the Ford Ranger clock counts down to 7 a.m. Three, two, one, and we're underway for round three of AFC Outdoors in these windy conditions, and look at those boats go. As usual, all our pros wearing their Club Marine PFDs, and what a sight that is. Look, Team Humminbird, Team Mercury, going straight up the middle, heading up the Narang River. Off to the right goes Team Berkeley, up towards Runaway Bay, and going off left, Team V8X Magazine, Darren Dizzyborg, staying at the spit. This weather's crazy. It's from the south at about 20 to 30 knots now, I would say, and uh, let's just hope it doesn't put the fish off. Yes, the real challenge for our pros today will be the wind. Adam's up in the chopper. How does it look from up there? Have a look at this. This is just what these boats are designed for. Now, it doesn't look all that rough down there from up here, but let me tell you, there's some serious waves that those boats are belting through at the moment. They're going flat stick. Thanks, Adam. Let's have a look at the weather for today. Overcast right throughout the day. We've talked about the strong winds. There's also a chance of rain later on, a maximum temperature of 23 degrees. Adam, who have you spotted first up and where have they stopped? Mate, we're sitting right over the top of Tim the Brim Morgan and he's doing exactly what we thought he would do. He's now up the Narang, fishing boat hulls and pontoons. Up close now with Tim. Team Humminbird currently second place in the competition. He knows this arena. Yep. Right the back of his hand, and as you'd expect, he is on straight away for his first fish. Good start. Not a big fish. <laughs> Only a little fish, but I'll put him on the rural loop, but he'll probably go a centimetre under, I'd say. We should mention the legal limit is smaller in Queensland than in New South Wales. They only have to be 23 centimetres to the fork and the tail. That one does it easy. That's one in the live well, just what you'd expect from the champ. Now, over to Scott Towner from Team Berkeley. He would love to do likewise and get one in the well early. Really with this wind, you've got no feel of the bites. You got It's really hard to see your line go because the wind's just blowing it all over the place. So it's. I think it's more of just a... An instinct when you put a good cast in, you'll let it sink just a couple of feet and give it a hop and hope to feel some weight. It's not just about instinct. Bang! Oh, yeah. He's on. It's also about skill. These guys are the best in the business, and in these conditions, they'll still land plenty of fish. Well, let's hope this one stays on. He'll be just legal, I think, for the Gold Coast. He'll be about 24 to the fork almost, so we'll pop him in the well. Team Berkeley on the scoreboard. And take a look at that shot from our chopper. This really proves the Gold Coast is a unique place to hold a world-class fishing tournament. Right down there, in the shadows of those huge skyscrapers, at the front of these luxurious houses on the canals, is Darren Ball from Team V8X magazine. He's trying to get on the board and land his first keeper as well. There's one. Just sitting down there on the bottom of those rocks. Not real big. But I think it'd be illegal here on the Gold Coast. We won't muck around with him and get him straight in. Well, that's three of our pros off the mark. We'll take a break. When we return, the fishing gets good for those in the know. Stay with us. There he is. They're the ones I was getting yesterday. Welcome back to the Australian Fishing Championships. Below me, a very brave move by Team Berkeley Scott Towner to come four or five kilometres from the start line north. 
that means he has to punch back into what is possibly going to be a 40 or 50 knot southerly to get back to the start line. Good luck, Scotty. Let's hope you packed your raincoat, mate. Well, will the tactics pay off for Scott Towner? One in the well, looking for number two. Nothing like yesterday's bite. Yesterday, every, pretty much every boat and pontoon had fish on them. You, catch, you go in, you catch a fish off a boat and leave straight away. Might be the wind change. Yesterday was a northwesterly. Today's out of the south, so maybe it sort of shut the fish down. I'm starting to wish I didn't come up this way. Now we've got to go back in it. He may have to go back with a full bag because he's on again. Nice fish for a canal. These are the ones I've been after. It looks like a better fish than his first. It's still green. He's brought it close to the boat. He's got it on the hooks, but he still has to complete the contract and land it in the net. Don't count your chickens until it's in the well. Come on. Come on. There he is. They're the ones I was getting yesterday in here. We can put a bag of them together. We will be very hard to beat, I think. How's your morning started out, Tim? Yeah, pretty good, Steve. I got one in my first little canal. I thought I'd get at least two or three out of there, but with that wind blowing, it makes it a bit more difficult. Are you going to change tactics because of the wind? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to keep going along. I'm actually uh, throwing a hard body in between the pontoons here, and I think you'd be licking your lips about this one, mate. A little whiting. <laughs> a little whiting. be tasty, but uh, not what's required today. So you're throwing a, a hard body on the the open stretches between the, the structure and then going back to a plastic around the docks and pontoons? Yeah, on this high tide here, the brim will actually get up along these flats here and feed in the, on the higher watermark. And then you'll also get the fish holding in under the pontoon. So the little hard body here covers that ground really effectively. And then I throw the plastic in when I'm fishing it really slowly where they're holding under the pontoons. All right, mate, hang in there. Tim Morgan, the man with a plan. Now, here's our first look at Chris Hickson from Team Mercury. As you can see, he's yet to get on the board. The wind's not too bad in the canals because you're so protected by the houses, but just the fact that there is a change in the weather, and when it does that, the fish seem to go off the board a bit. Well, that's how I find it anyway, so... There's not much you can do about it when you're in a tournament. You just have to keep fishing the conditions. Yep, got him. That's timely for Chris because he's been going over an hour. Finally, oh, he's all right. Hope he stays on. Oh. They're the ones who've been trying to catch all morning. Yep, that's him. He's number one. Oh, one brim. Good stuff. He, um, he's eating what I've been trying all morning. The grass went over the hidden weight, but what I've just done, I sneakily went down a size in hidden weight to about a 40th, so it's sinking a bit slower back to him, and then cut the top off me plastic, so he just swallowed it down really quick. At this level, in this style of competition, you must change your tactics to suit the conditions. Back to Darren Borg, one in the well, on for number two. Right, it's only a flathead, but it's a fish. With the amount of nothing we've been catching lately, It's good to actually catch something. Trouble is, not the time we wanted to catch it because it's a good spot here. We got a good fish here yesterday, so hopefully we can get him back in and get that brim that's in there. Bad luck for Dizzy Borg. Flathead not on the menu today. Back over to Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird. Now, since we last saw him, he's put another one in the live well. He's on now for number three in just over an hour. Just what you'd expect from the champ. Oh, a bright start. Another little fella, but I'll, you'll have to go on the rule of that one. Might be just under, I'd say. So, little brim just on that pearl watermelon Berkeley. He's found the flat water and he's finding the fish and Steve Starling has found him. What's your call, Tim? Is he going to go? Uh, he's going to be right. <laughs> Probably 22, this one, I'd say. Oh, no, 23 and a half. So, they don't have to be too big up here in Queensland. So, even a brim this side. You know, as long as we get five in the well, you can relax and then go on to upgrade. He's having fun and he's our current leader. Here's Adam Reuter. We're here with Chris Hickson from Team Mercury. Chris, old son, how's your day progressing? Pretty darn ordinary, to tell you the truth. I've, um, I've got one in the well and missed I don't know how many fish. I'm just, I'm fishing the same as yesterday and they're 
coming up and eating it, and I'm just clean missing them the whole time. I've tried a few different things to try and hook them a bit better, but none of it's working. How are you going with the wind? Oh, the wind's not too bad. It's, it's hard in a few places, and I've, the fish aren't in the same spots in a lot of them, but I've just moved around and found the right spots, and the fish are there. I just can't catch them. Well, keep plugging away, mate, and good luck with the rest of the day. Back over to Scott Towner from Team Berkeley. Going along nicely. Now with three in the well. Oh, that's a good one. Well, good bag fish anyway. Just got to get him in now. He is oozing confidence, Scott Towner. This could be number four in the live well. There's the lure. Three inch pumpkin seed fry. And he's got these go. little brim going the gulp on the Gold Coast. Well, I think that might be number four. It certainly is. And I know there's plenty of time to go, but it looks like a real tight contest between Scotty Towner and Tim Morgan. They're going neck and neck at the moment. Yep. And he answers the challenge. He's on for number four. He won't be denied here on his home turf. That's a better one, this one. Excellent. Still not a big brim. Only probably 26 or 27 to the fork, but number four in the world. I'm pretty happy after just over an hour of fishing. Tim, number four? Number four, Steve, yep. So once again, not a huge brim, but you know, number four in the world after just over an hour of fishing, I'm stoked. You'll feel even better when you've got number five in there. That's exactly right. All right, go get him. Coming up after the break, the weather sours, but the oh, fishing wow. isn't spoiled. Go, yeah, we talked our way into a fish. How's that? It worked too. <laughs> Welcome back to the Australian Fishing Championships on the Gold Coast. This is Darren Dizzy Borg, just looking to get something going, trying to build some momentum. This is going to be extremely hard to fish this bank, but I know there's usually a lot of good fish sitting along here, so we have to give it a go. Got him. I think he might be a half decent fish too. He hit pretty good. No, oh, he's only a little baby as well. Straight in he comes. He might go legal, but I'm not real confident. Although it's only 23 to the fork in Queensland. So you never know, we might be lucky. It could well be number two, and not for the first time this morning, the all-important ruler will come into play. We'll grab our ruler out and we'll see if we're in business. Yeah, 24 and a half to the fork. Finally, we get fish number two. Now we can start going forward again. Here we go, in the live well. Whew. Feel better now. Back over to Chris Hickson from Team Mercury. Just take a look at that wind, completely unprotected. A real contrast to where we've seen Tim Morgan, who's fishing away from the wind. But he's on, just over two and a quarter hours into the competition. This could be number two for the youngster. Maybe. It's on a hard body, you never know. Close. Yep, got him. Well, Chris Hickson from Team Mercury doesn't seem to be struggling with the breeze, but he is struggling to put size fish in his well. I think that's his second. I'll just put him on the measuring stick. Chris, is that number two? Sure is. <laughs> well done. Just, he's about 25 to the fork. I'd like him a bit bigger, but he'll do for now. Good stuff. All right, we keep plugging away, we can get there. And the man he has to catch is Tim the Brim Morgan, who only needs one now to complete his full bag. Yep. And bingo, he's on again. I know I've said it before over the last couple of years, but he makes it look so easy. This will be number five, and he ventures into upgrade territory. <laughs> yes. Still another little fish. Have to go on the roof. Timmy, that again. looks like a five fish smile. That's a five fish smile, Starlo. Once again, only little fish. I hope I've got none of these in by the end of the day, but I had to have five in the well so early, it's a, it's a really good feeling. So it takes the pressure off. It lets you start targeting bigger fish. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to leave this canal just once I've done these last couple of pontoons, and I'm going to go down to Benoa Waters. And on this running tide, that's my big fish spot. So I've got a nice one there yesterday. Let's hope I can get a good one there today. All right, mate, get him in the well. Fantastic stuff from Tim Morgan. Not even two and a half hours into the competition, a full bag. Steve Starling caught up with our reigning champion yesterday after his pre-fish. Tim, you've been with AFC Outdoors since the very first series. Has it become a highlight of your season? 
Oh, definitely, Steve. The road trip's unreal going on there. The, the guys you're fishing with, they're the best in the, uh, the tournament circuit, and it's, uh, it's just really good fun. So would you say that the Gold Coast was, was your favourite brim venue? Definitely. I only live an hour away from here, and if I'm going social fishing for brim for a weekend, which I haven't done for quite some time because of the hectic schedule, um, I'll always come to the Gold Coast. It's probably my favourite spot. I've got jetties and pontoons here which I can go to, and now I'll catch fish off. Timmy, they call you Tim the Brim Morgan, but you're a lot more than a single species angler, and you proved that in 2006 by taking out the ABT Bass Grand Final. How did that feel? Oh, it felt awesome, Steve. It was, a, it was a, probably one of the highlights of my career, I think. But I actually started fishing the bass comps before the brim comps and, uh, and did quite well in them and really enjoyed doing it. But after fishing the AFC with Carl last year, it gave me a newfound passion for this, the sport. And, and I went out and fished them again this year and uh, managed to win the right comp, I think. Well, not only did you win, but you finished ahead of Carl. So your bass fishing partner in this series of the AFC Outdoors actually finished below you on the bass ladder. How does that work? Oh, don't worry. I'll let him know about it. But uh, Carl actually won angry of the year this year, which is probably a bit more of a prestigious uh, accolade, I think. Now, something completely different uh, in this series of AFC Outdoors. We're going to finish up at Lake Awonga, targeting those big barramundi. How do you feel about that? Oh, I can't wait, Steve. I've caught a fair few barra in my life, and uh, they're a big fish. They pull hard, they jump, and I think it's going to be exciting, especially for some of the guys who haven't done that sort of fishing before. They're really going to have a great time. And does Carl have much barramundi experience? He's probably been to Wonga a few more times than me, and Carl's a bit of a golden child. It doesn't matter what he touches, it, it turns to gold. And uh, I think the biggest trouble fishing it with Carl this year is, is going to be if he if I get a fish over a metre, I think he's going to have trouble lifting it in the boat, so I might have to grab the net and him in the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> he's not all that heavily built, is he, young Carl? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it's certainly working for Team Hummingbird, and we wish you all the best in this series. Thanks a lot, Steve. From the champ to one of his challenges, Team V8X Magazine's yes. Darren Dizzyborg. As you can see, just two in the live well. There we are, still fishing away. Needing to find three more. Doing it tough. Ooh, see that? That was a bite. I bet you it wasn't a brim, though. No. Ooh, we nearly did it. We nearly talked ourselves into catching a fish then. We might have to keep trying this. This is like a good idea. Cast the lure in there, give it a few jiggles. Say, come on, Mr. Brim, you never know. Might talk our way into a fish. There we go, we talked our way into a fish. How's that? It worked too. <laughs> oh, I should remember that trick. That's a good one. You wouldn't believe you could talk yourself into a fish, but I just talked myself into a fish. And straight in she comes. <laughs> Behind What's me, Darren Dizzy Boy. Oh, and over the side it goes. <laughs> Dizzy, mate, oh. um... <laughs> Can you believe the luck I am having today? <laughs> Dizzy, that was, uh, that was a fairly ordinary piece of angling. Um, oh, explain to the viewers exactly what happened just then, mate. Well, we haven't really been getting any bites or catching any fish, so I thought I'd try to talk the fish into it. And I was talking my way through how I was going to catch one, and he jumped on. So I thought, I haven't got time for the net here. In it come. Hit the deck, he did two kicks and he bounced straight over the side. Let's take a look at that again. After some wonderful running commentary, slips through his hands, bounces on the boat. I tell you, that brim is Steve McQueen with the great escape. Bounce once, twice, back into the water. Dizzy, you got to do better than that, son. Time for a break on AFC Outdoors. When we return, the brim get bigger and the upgrading begins. Welcome back to AFC Outdoors. We're back with Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird. Since we last saw him, he's already upgraded one of his fish. Yep. Oh, good brim too. Good upgrade. He just steers the nose of the boat away from that pontoon to keep the brim clear. Now, down with the EnviroNet, looking to make it upgrade number two. Yes. Hoo-hoo. That, not, still not a big fish, but probably getting up to around the 29th. 30 centimetre mark. And you remember that big prong I was using? <laughs> it is all the way down his throat. You can't even see the lure. That's how far down he scoffed it. So, so they're the sort of fish I'm targeting on that bigger lure. The big lure translating into bigger fish, and that could well translate into bigger points on the scoreboard this afternoon. Back over to Darren Dizzyborg, still trying to make amends for that drop fish. He's got to get something happening here. Oh, that was a big fish sitting right where I landed that lure then. Yeah, got him. 
Got him. Didn't think he was going to chase that lure then. Didn't look like he was going to chase it, but he did. He come out and took it. But it's not the big one I've seen. Dizzy taking no risks this time, but has he gone for the net just that little bit too early? Gee, some of these fish, they just do not like going in the net. It's fish number four. A real sense of relief for Darren Dizzy Borg. Now let's head back over to Adam Reuter. So, Scotty, how have you gone this morning? I'd like some slightly bigger ones. I've got that one fish just over 30. And the rest range from 26 centimetres down to tw just on 23, so I've definitely got to upgrade them if I want to uh, end up on the podium at the end. Well, you've got just over two hours to do it, mate, so on your way. Thank you. See ya. Back to Chris Hickson from Team Mercury. Now, unlike the other pros, Chris prefers to fish natural structure. He's in a canal yep. off the Narang River. He's on for number four, and he really needs it. He might be a keeper. Oh, his mate's way bigger. I wonder if he'll eat too. No, I think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Gonna be close. Oop. I reckon he might just go 22. Oh, tell you what, 23 and a half. <laughs> Giddy up. Look at that little sucker. 23 and a half to the fork. <laughs> Wouldn't have thought his mate was way bigger than him, so hopefully I can go in there now and get him as well. Well, the brim that swim together could get caught together. Who knows? Here's Starlo. <laughs> uh, watching a gun brim angler like Tim the Brim Morgan fishing for these fish amongst man-made structure becomes so obvious that accurate casting is paramount. A lot of his casts are low-angled flick casts, and he's actually bouncing the lure right in underneath these pontoons and jetties. Other times he's getting it between a boat and a jetty. There's a lot of skill there, and if you don't get your lure in there repeatedly, you're not going to catch fish. That's why Timmy's been catching so many. Thanks, Steve. Now, in contrast to Tim, Scott Towner is out in the middle of the river. He's searching for his first upgrade. He's just dropping his soft plastic over the top of a reef, and he's on. This is good news. I think they're all little squeakers, actually. They're only small fish. The big one's got to come up sooner or later. Actually, that one... I'll just pull him in. Now, for this to be an upgrade, it needs to be heavier than one of the five fish in his live well. As long as it's legal, it's all about weight. If it is, he simply replaces one fish with the other, releases the lighter fish back into the river. Yeah, he's over. He should upgrade that, uh, that smaller guy in there. Competition fishing can be an arduous task. That is, of course, unless you're using Berkeley lures. Berkeley's revolutionary lures, including power bait and gulp, are designed by fishermen for fishermen. Berkeley's patented fish feeding stimulant is fortified throughout all Berkeley soft plastics. This fish feeding stimulant attracts and encourages fish to bite and hold on longer than any other soft plastic bait available. Berkeley is not only renowned for making soft plastics, but they also make hard bodied lures, rods, the world famous fireline, jig heads, and many other fishing accessories. If you want the edge the next time you go out fishing, then start using soft plastics. Our pros do, and they get results. Speaking of results, back with Tim Morgan, fishing behind a boat called Bad Debt. I don't think so. He's already in credit yep. to the tune of three upgrades, and with 90 minutes remaining, he's about to increase the balance sheet and make it four. He's going to be hard to stop from here. <laughs> if I can get the net under him. Yes. Oh, I don't know, it's still another, another pretty small fish, but I reckon he might go over 25, so we'll just keep plodding away at it. We'll drop him in. It's all good for Team Humminbird. And They're on the charge way. for the maximum 10 points. Perhaps the only man that can challenge is Scott Towner. Here he is with Adam. Scotty, I hate to keep interrupting you, mate, but um, <coughs> you're getting a fish every cast. Is, uh, is that something that normally happens here? <laughs> It does happen on the Gold Coast, I think. When you find a little patch of fish, um, they're only small fish. They will, they're really ravenous. It's actually it's a shame to be dropping those fish back in because they will probably spook the school. Hopefully they'll just keep on moving down with the current and they won't swim back to these guys. So um, a fish of cast is always good. You know you finally you're going to bag something a little bit bigger. 
but he unfortunately won't upgrade either. So I'll just drop him back down into the water. He's got the quantity. Now all he needs is just the quality. A man that needs something is Darren Dizzy Borg. They love these gulp shrimps, but they don't like those hooks. <laughs> hey Pete, you ever had a bad day like this in the water? <laughs> this is frustrating. I've had that many bites, that many hookups, half hookups, part hookups. Well, before he was talking to the fish, now he's talking to the cameraman and himself. Time is now his enemy. So a bit more upgrading going on, mate. Yes, yeah, Steve, I've had uh, five upgrades now, but as you can see, they're still not really big fish, but as long as I'm catching them and every gram helps. I bet you're having fun too, aren't you? Having a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a bit of a happy hunting ground for you, this particular canal, hasn't it? I think I've fished in this canal every AFC event and uh, I've just pulled three upgrades out of this one, so I'll just kind of keep going up the next one now. Tim the Brim Morgan, he's looking good. All right, mate, we'll get out of your way, let you get stuck into it. Not long to go. No worries. Stay with us. The bird is the word, and the upgrades just keep coming. Oh, yeah, and there he is, that 30. <laughs> Actually, that's my fish of the day. The Australian Fishing Championships is a gruelling tour of the east coast of Australia, but thanks to the versatility of the Ford Ranger, our anglers travel in style. With up to 3,000 kilograms of towing capability, the Ford Rangers effortlessly tow the fiberglass boats of the AFC series around the country. The pros need plenty of space, and the Rangers' generous pickup box size is perfect for storing parts for their boats, fuel, rods, tackle boxes, and hopefully that all-important championship trophy. Using the rear of the cab is made simple because of the unique Super Cab B pillarless dual rear access system. This cabin provides our anglers with ample room to store valuable gear and fit the odd mate or two, while the unique way in which the doors open ensure easy access. No back braking or squeezing to get loads in or out. There is also an all-important extra storage compartment under the rear floor. This year the anglers covered over 5,000 kilometres and with excellent fuel economy, the new Ranger made those trips to the service station few and far between. The legendary tough Ford Ranger has many other versatile features, so visit your local Ford dealer to arrange a test drive and experience the new Ford Ranger for yourself. Back with the action now on the Gold Coast, Team Humminbirds, Tim Morgan. Already with five upgrades. Yep. And he's on again. This could be number six. An hour to go in the competition, and he continues to set the pace. Oh, yeah, and there he is, that 30. <laughs> Actually, that's my fish of the day. Is that your biggest fish today, Tim? Yep, I think he'll go... Probably I've got two about the same size now, just over that 30 centimetre mark, so... I'll cast that little right up the guts of that pontoon, probably halfway along it. Just as that light tackle tactics jig head was sinking, he ate the lure, I hit him, he just shook his head, wound him out straight into the net. It's the perfect tournament fish. And some would say caught by the perfect tournament angler. Scotty Towner now, hoping for his second upgrade to put some pressure on Tim Morgan. That's the bite I wanted. He's been fishing the same location, using the same technique. He's been wading his way through countless smaller fish, and now hopefully this is the big kicker fish that he's been waiting for. Let's just hope it's a brim. There are a lot of different species in the waters in Queensland. You never know if you've got a brim or what you got, or a trevally, or... But this one's a brim, I think, and it's going to be a good brim. Oh. It's definitely what I came up here for, this guy. Get in there. Ah, oh, yes. That is a lovely Gold Coast brim. If I can put five of them in the bag, I don't think the other guys will have a chance of beating me. Well, Timmy Morgan's hit a real purple patch. He's upgrading constantly, and he just put one in the well that was 32 centimetres to the fork. That's what they mean when they talk about a kicker fish, and that could make a big difference today. Timmy's looking pretty hot at the moment. I'd like to have my money on him. Timmy may be hot, but Darren Dizzy Borg has been cold for most of the day. He still doesn't have five in the live well, and we're inside the last half an hour. 
What can he do here? Okay, there's one. Now we're just going to get him out of there. The joys of using light line. Even small fish can be very hard to land. Uh, I think he'll go legal. I think we might just have our fifth fish there if we're lucky. It may be small, small one, but that's but... a full bag for Team V8X magazine. Back to Tim Morgan, he had a full bag yep. at 20 minutes past eight. Look at the local knowledge. He's virtually in someone's laundry here. On for another upgrade. <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> yes. It looks pretty good. It could it's be another upgrade, one. and it'll top off a terrific day for local Queenslander Tim Morgan. I'm here with Chris Hickson from Team Mercury. Chris, you've uh, got only a couple of minutes to go before you need to get back to the start finish line. How has your day been? It's been um, it's been a bit up and down, Adam. I've got five fish, but they're poxy. <laughs> they're only little tiny rats, and I've I've come to this stretch from the bridge down and thought I might get an upgrade along here because I got a, one good fish here yesterday. I think I caught probably seven legals, and they're all between 23 and 24. So. They might have upgraded in weight by 10 or 20 grams, but I thought, nah, throwing them straight back over the side trying to find that good one, and it didn't happen. It's just not happening for Chris Hickson today. He'll be very disappointed with his performance. Well, that's it. Let's just hope we've got enough in the well to uh, at least give us second place, hopefully first. I've got about 20 minutes to get back to the finish line. I'm pretty happy with how my day went. I would have liked, I've got the two over 30 that I wanted. I just needed a couple more of those 26s and 27s to be 29s, but we'll see how it goes. I don't think it'll be enough to win, but I should be up there anyway. So as our pros head back for the all important weigh-in, let's take a look at the fish caught on the Gold Coast. Chris Hickson landed plenty of fish, but unfortunately for him, none were in the upgrade zone. Tim Morgan had an outstanding day with eight upgrades. Scott Towner also having a good day, landing three upgrades. But unfortunately for Darren Borg, not his best day, only landing seven fish. Join us after the break as we find out who takes the maximum ten points on round three of the Australian Fishing Championships. Welcome back to AFC Outdoors on the Gold Coast and we're with the man of the moment, Tim Morgan from Team Humminbird as he prepares for today's weigh-in. Two of our pros have already weighed in, both with a full bag of five fish. Our current leader is Chris Hickson from Team Mercury, just 80 grams ahead of Darren Borg. That drop fish could well have made the difference. But it's been a big day for the local boy, Tim Morgan. Our third contestant up to the podium is Tim the Brim Morgan, and of course he's got his five fish. In fact, he uh, caught a lot of fish out there. And I can see one down in the corner there that will definitely weigh for Big Brim. There you go, Adam. You had a pretty good day. You were enjoying yourself out there, weren't you? Yeah, it was pretty tough condition, Steve, but I got a limit in there early, which I wanted. I went and tried to upgrade to a bigger fish for a couple of hours there, which sort of backfired. I got one about 30, but I wasted a lot of time there, I think. Then I went to some canals. I, I really fish a lot, caught a lot of fish, and I think in the last two hours you were there, upgraded probably five or six times. Have you got a rough idea how many fish you would have caught today? I probably only got about 20 fish, but I'm pretty lucky, I think. They just gradually got bigger as the day went on. <laughs> now, you say only 20 fish. A lot of social anglers would be wrapped to go out there, particularly on a, a windy day like today, and catch 20 fish. It's doable, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Like, down here, it's not uncommon to catch, you know, come down luring and catch 40 to 50 fish a day. So, But I still, in these conditions, 20 is good. Pretty healthy fishery, then, and they're pretty healthy brim in there. The mark to beat, and it's uh, Chris Hickson standing there behind you with 1.55 kilos. I don't think there's much doubt that you are going to blow that completely out of the water with 2.56 kilos. As expected, he is well ahead, we but let's remember, there. Scott Towner did upgrade three times, and here he is. We've made him wait in the wings until last, but in he comes, Scott Towner from Team Berkeley with a lovely bag of five fish from here on the Gold Coast. A very consistent bag of fish, and one in there that will definitely weigh for Big Brim as well. Hand those over to Adam. Tell me a little bit about your day, Scott. Uh, it wasn't too bad, actually, considering all the wind. Uh, I ran up uh, up river first, up to the Cooma, and uh, fished uh, Paradise Point, I think it's called. A few canals there, and uh, got a couple of bust offs and got my bag out of there, and then decided to come back down to the Narang and just fish a couple of rock bars, a little bit deeper in that wind, and, uh, and I got uh, probably about three or four upgrades there, so it was good. Was the wind a challenge? 
the wind definitely was a challenge. There'll be some footage that uh, that uh, I think they'll wipe with me uh, saying some expletives and casting into the wind and up onto boats and yeah, but. It was a challenge, but uh, you've got to sort of try and come through in these challenges. Well, you've come through in style. We'll see if it's enough in a second because we've got uh, Tim the Brim Morgan standing there on 2.56 kilos, and he also had the current big brim at 710 grams. This is going to challenge both of those marks, I believe. Let's get it on there and find out. And it is 2.32 kilos. <laughs> so uh, I'm afraid. I really hurt. <laughs> it's a big day well, for no, Tim no, Morgan, no, no, no. who also secured the Engel Big Fish of the Day. It wasn't huge, but it was a healthy 710 grams. Amazingly, it's his sixth win in the AFC, and the two bonus points for the Engel Big Fish gives his team the maximum 12 points. Scott Towner coming in second and scoring eight points for Team Berkeley. Chris Hickson third with six points, and just the three points for Team V8X Magazine. But once again, the day belonged to Tim Morgan. I knew I had to have a good day today. I was two points behind Dizzy and I thought he was the big threat here on the Gold Coast and I just wanted to give Carl a good lead going into the bass because he, he did such a good job for me last year and, and to win, get big fish and probably good for us that Dizzy did come last because that's given us a seven point break on the rest of the field. So to the championship leaderboard after round three and the perfect day by Tim Morgan has seen Team Humminbird surge ahead to 28 points. In equal second on 21, Team Berkeley and Team V8X Magazine and still in touch just four points behind, Team Mercury on 17. Well, Adam, another nail-biting finish here on a rather grey and windswept Queensland Gold Coast. But in the end, victory belonged to Tim the Brim Morgan, boosting his Team Humminbird into a very handy lead going into our three bass rounds and giving his partner, young Carl Jockamson, a hefty leg up. Well, that's right, Starlo, but it is still anyone's race with Team V8X Magazine and Team Berkeley locked together on the same points and... Team Mercury, I think they're still in the running. Hey, it's anybody's race as we saddle up now and hit the start of the Bass to Barra Trail. Off to Lake Lenthal's for round four, but ultimately <laughs> bound for glory and those monster barramundi up at Lake Awonga in a few rounds' time. Meanwhile, you can find out all the latest results and news from the series by visiting fishnet.com.au and following the AFC Outdoors links. We'll catch you next time, and until then, tight lines. So, with three brim rounds completed, we now continue the tour with the bass rounds on Queensland's Bass to Barra Trail, ending with our final event at Lake Awunga. The pros will compete as individuals until that final round, but at Awunga, all the rules change. The anglers will fish side by side as team against team. All eight anglers on the water at the same time, fighting for double points in the very first AFC Outdoors Barra Mundi Challenge. But there are four rounds and plenty of rod-bending excitement to come before then. Join us next time for all the hottest angling action right here on the Australian Fishing Championships.